Let's go to Loan Performance Insights, guys. This is from one of my favorite places uh, because I'm a big old dork. This is from CoreLogic. Uh, this is about Loan Performance Insights that talk about delinquency. Uh, I was very, very surprised about this. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I was actually two sides of the same coin. Very surprised on one hand and not surprised at all on the other <laughs> because the data tells you exactly why. Um, so they measure early stage, mid stage, and late stage delinquencies. Um, it's obviously important for measuring the health of the mortgage market. And what we see here is that from November of 22 to November of 23, there was zero change in delinquency rate. So I'm right away going to remind everybody it's because they got those golden handcuffs and they got these super low fixed loans in 2020 and 2021 and yeah. 2022 in the beginning. And delinquency rates did not change, despite That's economic crazy. factors, affordability, jobs, and other stuff, and inflation. <laughs> Delinquencies are the same. That's crazy. Hey, but drop in the comments. It's crashing. Let me know. Let us know. Let us know. I want to yeah. know. Let's do it. Let's go. I'll meet you in the comments. <laughs> everything's crashing all the time. <laughs> Feelings um, versus facts. Let's go. You, saw, <laughs> you did see delinquency increase in some states here. Um, on your screen, you're going to see Louisiana, 5.6. Mississippi, 5.5. New York, 4%. Virginia, four uh, percent. Alabama, three point nine. Maryland, three point seven. Um, and I think that's you know that's a, a factor for uh, it's a, that's happening because of uh, a lot of different reasons. Yeah. Um, but in general, it looks like delinquencies are still uh, okay. I'm going to say okay. It's not great because I think there's some other things that are going to happen to people. Uh, but serious delinquency, which is that ninety days or more, um, held. It held. It didn't even go up. It's held for four yeah. straight months. Yeah. So it's been consistent at that rate. And as you look at the days delinquent from 30 to 60 to 90 to 120, it actually starts tapering off and eventually people end up getting in foreclosure. But yeah. um, this is this is actually a, a pleasant surprise in my week to see, I mean, to, to see this because, um, you know, there's a lot of chatter about NODs and foreclosures, yeah. but people who have a low payment that's on a fixed rate, I think that's not necessarily going to be the issue. I think it's going to be other stuff. So yeah. I like what they noted here. They said still... Still, as noted, in recent core logic, a strong job market is enabling most borrowers with mortgage to make payments on time, along with forbearance programs and help struggling bar homeowners temporarily suspend or modify their payment structures. So I think that's a huge uh, benefit as well, because there isn't like, you know, how to say there's so much safeguards in place now compared to years before that, you know, even if you wanted to stop making your payment, you can call the bank. The bank's going to work with you. They're going to want to keep that asset flowing because the last thing they want is to, you know, get a whole bunch of houses and have to sell it, you know, at a loss. So they're like, how can we keep you happy? keep making your payments if we have to modify to keep you on track that's okay we'd rather do that than take a loss and then call it a day that's the lesson they learned so, back in the mortgage meltdown the thank meltdown. you i didn't want and, to say 07 08 here's, but that's, here's the thing what covid taught what us what covid taught us a lot yes. was let's be a little more lenient with these modifications right i look mean how it played out look, look yeah, how it's played now there was a monitorium where you couldn't make your payments first for the first six months and then they extended that for the first uh, the next Six months, so it was, and then they did it again for two years. So what I liked about this is that if you look at this from 2020 to now, like compared to 07 when you basically took everybody's path, yeah. everybody financially struggled for years, took them years to get back on their feet, to even be close to where they were at. Some people probably didn't even recover. Since 2020, when, some, exactly. So now when, when it happened somewhat similarly again yeah. they took the right measures and then look at how now foreclosures throughout the years are still being maintained at low levels and they're not spiking like crazy like how they should been if they would have just let people do what they got to do and not yeah. step in and make these you know these safeguards in place correct so i, I remember uh, many years ago when i started getting more in depth and more um, specific with the market data i started watching there was a like a traditional like transitional employment rate at uh, employment unemployment rate like three percent mm -hmm. and i'm not i'm not like quoting the, you know um the you know, unemployment uh, um, necessarily. I'm saying that there's always like 3% of the working population that's in transition. They've either lost a job, gained a job, or they've yeah. changed jobs. Mm. And so this 3% mark is really in line with this 30-day delinquency of 2.9%. I mean, they're almost like in lockstep. And some of that is to be expected, I think, because uh, not necessarily because they're inextricably linked, but more that they're representative of what's happening in people's lives. Yeah. It's a reflection of what's going on when someone's losing a job, a company's downsizing, mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you know, someone passes away or the, the breadwinner passes away and a person that's in the yeah. house doesn't make money or so whatever it is. So there, there's going to be, yeah, there's a lot of variables that will cause someone to have delinquency. And I know that this transitional, uh, traditional unemployment, employment rate of 3% of people just kind of cycling in and out and through the system, um, that to me uh, signals that it's okay right now yeah. and there is no immediate threat. 
I don't think yeah. that long term that is also going to be the yes, case I because I think people that. are still under this yeah. heavy debt load. We talk about consumer debt being the highest it's ever been, crossing a trillion dollars and still going. That's so and cool. that that's eventually going to that's eventually going to have to be dealt with. Yeah. And if home equity is also the highest it's ever been in recorded history, yeah. that seems like the most natural way out. I know it may not work for everybody, but that is going to be, I think, a way for people to avoid foreclosure. Yeah, and one still we like, pay your debt down. One thing I keep hearing, you know, along the uh, media outlets that I listen to is uh, a, a black swan event because they they, they they preface this exactly the same. They're like, hey, well, everything looks in, you know, in line. There's no really much uh, foreclosure information, but, you know, unless there's a black swan event, something, you know, that we can't foresee or happen, happens then you know this stuff could change but if not mm -hmm. we're basically online to you know continue with the pace that we're at yeah. and, and i think a, a, a i think a, a a good sign moving forward is this this chart here that talks about the transition rate this is people to go from 30 days late to 60 and 60 days late to, mm -hmm. to 90 and you look at the 30 to 60 days and it went down from 22 to 23 yeah less yeah. less people in that in that category and then in the 60 to 90 day category that's also less yeah. From November twenty two to twenty three, so that indicates that it's actually tapering off. Uh, it's not always it's not always going to taper off altogether. Yeah. But I'm just saying that of Numbers. the data supplied, it is going in a neutral to better, not neutral to worse situation, uh, which I think is uh, good Positive. forecasting for looking forward for the rest of twenty twenty four and mortgage rates. Um, provided some black swan event like you're commenting, like I think <laughs> we'll we should see. expect we'll this is going to be about the same. <laughs> Uh, year over year change in overall mortgage delinquency uh, by all states and districts also is interesting, guys. There was 384 metros measured. Four were in serious delinquency uh, rate where serious delinquency increased. There were 21 where serious delinquency stayed the same, and 359 where serious delinquency decreased. Yeah. So 90% of the measured metros fall in this category where serious delinquency decreased. Jeez. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, it's good. I can't say Thank much. Thank you for I watching. Mean, no. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, hey, we're talking about unemployment still. People yeah. are just employed. The labor market is strong. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why we owe a lot to these numbers. It's, it has a lot to do with this. I think that's part of it. I mean, it, it, and I only say that not to correct. I'm just saying yeah. that there's part of the labor part of the labor force that's just going to be renting. Yeah. Which is not necessarily a delinquent even factor or variable. Yeah. It's really going to come down to people who making who can make those those housing payments. Yeah. And just because so many people refinance in 2020, 21, and 22, I just think that we're going to see this because the the types of things that are going to cause someone to fall into delinquency are going to be the lack of income or loss of income. Correct. It's so, going to be death of a, a spouse that either have do, two income correct. and one person dies or the only sole breadwinner dies. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, you know, divorce. It's going to be, all, it's going to be all sorts of other yeah. things. That's what I was going to say. I think it's going to be a combination of different financial, like, uh, um, things happening in, at once, not like yeah. them not being able to pay their payment because the payment's so low, but it's going to be a combination of this, 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 and that, that then leads to, yeah. I can't do this now. Right. And it's going to be, you know, gradually happening and people are going to be taking L's, taking L's until they, I got to sell this. I can't, yeah. I already maxed out my credit cards. And yeah. And even if someone does fall well, into the delinquency, the other, I think selling to like the house. Exactly. The house payment is a last to fall. So yeah. everything else is going to fall before the big one does. And here's the other thing. I mean, hey, right before I fail, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to probably have to move out of state. And that's right? what people are holding on to. I'm going to probably have to go rent. So they they have different outlets. And here's the other difference, too, of why I think we're seeing a lot of these numbers being so much lower than we anticipated before is because everything we've done for all the years since the SAFE Act was actually enacted, we've had to qualify everybody. Yes. You know, there's no more stated. There is stated income and all that. But, but when still. you're doing the stated income, you're doing all that, you're putting so much more money down, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you're required to put anywhere from 20 to 40% down. Right. Because the asset's the one that's really qualifying right, right. there. And then what the bank is doing is like, well, okay, well, you know, I'll let you borrow that money because now you yeah. put 40% down. And the likelihood of you not making that payment on that is a lot it's least likely. It's very low. You're coughing up a ton very of dough low. right Correct. up front. Instant equity, if you Correct. will. And you're not going to get that back because you can knock on the door and go, can I have my money back? Nope. You're going to qualify it. for that bad boy. We're <laughs> 2007, 2008. You didn't need to have, be a veteran to buy out 100% financing. Yeah. No, you know what I mean? Yeah. And what happened was these rates adjusted because we're all taking arms and adjustable rate mortgage. And so when the time came <laughs> and it came adjusted from that 1% to 4 or 5% on a million, it was, it was, it was yeah. just... It was kind of strong. And, and I feel like people are, are, are closely watching their equity to the point where, like, all right, if I sell, I won't be able to get out anymore. I got to sell now. Or, ah, I could still drown over here. 
yeah. they sell and make profit at the end. It, so yeah. until they feel like the pressure, pressure, then that's what exactly. They're and I see a lot of great value pertaining to this conversation yeah. in HomeBot. I know we provide HomeBot for all of our clients. They yeah. get a report every single month with their home value compared to their loan balance that's on record, as well as what the equity is doing up or down, what recent sales have been in your neighborhood, comparisons, that kind of thing. Yeah. And that, um, you know, if you are not receiving HomeBot from us yeah, and you're one of our know. clients, let us know and we can make sure that you're uh, that it's connected. It's yeah, always in there. But um, if for some reason you're not getting it, let us know. We'll help you figure that out. Uh, HomeBot is a great way for you to kind of track this uh not because you're in delinquency but you yeah. can see your equity um but um well, you know the delinquency conversation as part of the equity equity is going to be the way out for correct. people who are in yeah. delinquency that yeah. is the answer um and you know if you are in a position where your house for some reason is worth less than what you yeah. owe and you're a delinquent then those are signs of some other issues right. as stated in the article that are you know conditionally because of finances or debt load yeah. and things like that so and again you know the home buy is knowledge is power right yeah and yeah. it's only when applied. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that's what I like that it gives you, you know, the ability to learn how to leverage your Correct. asset. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited that delinquencies uh, are going down. They're stayed, they stayed low. They stayed the same from year over year. That was very uh, good. Crazy. Good to know. Not so surprised, but also a little bit surprised. I know that's playing both sides of the argument, guys. Um, but that was uh, satisfying. I'll put yeah. it that way. <laughs> so.